You should all have your paint. Um, it's 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 very like it should be. I'm gonna try to keep it simplistic, just uh, basic shapes. My canvas is bigger uh, than yours, um, but I think the proportions are right. Um, the very first part is a uh, very easy. Um, we want to just kind of create our sky. Um, I know you have the uh, the uh, the steps, but we want to do that. Step one is to uh, create our sky. We want a light blue. And also on this painting, if you want to change something, if you want a darker blue or you want to change a color, go ahead and do that. But I'm going to follow it by the steps. But if you do want to add something, add what you want to add. Um, you want to grab your biggest brush that you have. And um, you can kind of wet that brush, take the excess water off. I'm going to grab uh, my biggest brush. Let me make sure. OK, so I'm going to grab my biggest brush. I said my brush is different. I'm going with a bigger canvas. But grab your biggest one. You should have that biggest flat brush that you have. And what I want to do is um, you want to mix um, some of your blue paint, but you want to take a little bit of your blue paint like I said, a little bit. I'm gonna put stir into some of my white paint. You wanna try to keep some of your white paint pure, but I want just a lighter blue. And that's gonna be my sky. So I'm just gonna kind of create this horizon line about right there. Let me see, I don't know if you could see it. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of create that horizon line. And then I'm gonna work my way up, painting the light blue, the light sky blue. Okay. So just kind of work your way up. You wanna smooth out the paint, that light sky blue. And I have that light blue. I don't really stir it up all the way. I keep it kind of uh, swirly just because that'll kind of create the cloud effects and just kind of stretch it out, stretch it out. So you want to just take out your clumps. Just kind of zone out with that light blue. And you can grab some of that pure blue. You just want to kind of smooth it out. But I like the contrast of the lights and darks in there. So it's no right or wrong way to do it. So just smooth it out. So just smooth it out and uh, stretch it out any um clumps, you want to smooth it out just so it can dry and we'll be able to paint the building on top. But stretch it out. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so just take your time getting to the um, filling up your sky until where you're cool with um, and comfortable with your sky. Um, but like I said, stay in the zone, work on your sky, and then you can clean your big brush um, after you're cool with your sky. So I see we're still in the zone working on that sky. But uh, just get your sky where you want it. Um, our next step, just speaking a little ahead, I'm not trying to jump to the next step, but just to, um, we're gonna clean our brush and then we're gonna go ahead to painting our grass. Okay, so we're gonna still stick with our, um, we're gonna still stick with our, our big brush. Like I said, just clean it. Okay, so we're still gonna stick with the big brush that you have. Uh, green is the color. We just wanna kind of paint our grass. Um, but what I like to do is you have to be very, 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 very careful. I have the green. You can use the green uh, down here if you want. If you want that pure bright green, you can use that. But I'm gonna kind of make it like a forest green. So I'm gonna take a tiny, 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 tiny dot of black. Stir it into some of my green, just to kind of have that forest, that forest green. So I have that forest green, and I'm just gonna paint across. You just want to fill up that line that you have on the bottom. Okay, so we want to fill up, fill up that line on the bottom of the green. Same thing, you want to try to smooth it out, take off the clumps. We'll come back to some of that green, maybe darken up some green to add some bushes later. But now we have our sky and we have our ground where we can paint our building on. So you wanna work on that, your sky, your building, and then you can clean the green off of your brush when you finish. Okay, so sky, the green for our grass. We're gonna clean our brush when you get a chance. And then uh, we'll go to start to sculpting our building, sketching out our buildings. And we won't, uh, we're gonna change brushes for a little bit. We're gonna use what I call the pencil brush. It's the one with the point. So you should just have any brush you see with a nice fine point. That'll be uh, your sketch. And it's okay, if you paint it the whole canvas, you're good, you're good. Just paint, uh, like smooth it out, let it dry. And, th and then you can come on top of it with that green. That green will cover the sky. But our next step after the sky and after the green grass will be to find a, a pencil brush. I call these a pencil brush, the one with the point. These, I do put them in water. Whenever I wanna sharpen these pencil brushes, I put it in water, kind of give it a nice fine point. So give it a nice fine point. Take off the uh, excess water and the, uh, well, there's no paint on there now, but take off the excess water, kind of sculpt it into a point. The sketch is trying to keep it very light. Our sketch color that we're gonna use is gonna be red. We'll use red. 
Hey Nick, we have a question from someone saying they accidentally painted the whole canvas blue. Can I paint the grass over it? Oh yeah, definitely. The, the green grass will cover. Just smooth it out, smooth it out. Uh, let it dry for a, a couple minutes. As long as it's smooth with this acrylic, it'll dry like two minutes, three minutes, and then you can go over it with the grass. But you just want to locate your pencil brush. Okay, and red is going to be the color. Red is going to be the color. And if you have the step by step sheet, you can kind of see the sizing. And what we're going to paint first is pretty much like a almost like a square. Red is going to be the color. Wipe off if you need to wipe off. You want to keep it kind of light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the, it's a square. I try to keep the uh, lines pretty even on each side. Let's see, I'm, I'm gonna try to go darker so you can see. Try to keep it light, but I'm just gonna go darker just for the visual so you can see it better. Um, so I'm just gonna try to even my lines on the side. Okay, so it's pretty much a square, but instead of just going straight across, making it a boxy square, you want to just kind of arc. I'm going to give it a little arc. So I don't know how the lighting, if you could see it, but you just want it even on each side. And I know I have enough space. You just want to make sure you save enough space so that you can do the top of your not building. Nick, are you using a pencil brush right now? I'm, I'm using a pencil brush, but my brush is a little bit different because I'm going with a bigger canvas so you can see it. But yeah, you want the pencil brush for that. Whichever fine one. And then it'll probably allow you to go more finer than what I'm doing, but I just want it to go hard so you could see it. Thanks. Well, you're welcome. Okay, so we have that almost like a, a square. I arced it a little bit. And what I'm gonna do now is it's it's basically three tiers. It's this first part, the second part. I'm gonna go from each side, each corner, come in. Okay. And I'll leave, I'll leave it like that so you can see for a minute to make sure everybody's kind of caught up. We have that uh, square. And then I came from each corner. Let's see. I came from each corner. I kind of indented in a little bit. And then I'll close that off. Okay, so we're almost there. Square, I indented this tier right here. The next part is kind of like an upside down U, which is the top. Make sure you have enough space for the top of your building. And it's kind of like an upside down U. Still sticking with red. I'll darken it up. And if I need to slow down, let me let me know. Can you please?
Okay. Okay, so I'll I'll slow down. First one's a, a the square. I arced it right here. Instead of going straight across, I put a little arc on it. Then I come to the points. I indent, bring them inward. And then this one kind of goes straight across. And then on top of it is the kind of an upside down U. So we're still sticking with red, square, and dent this tear. Okay, so I have I have the arc. And I want to go straight across. So these are just the bones. These are concrete. We'll be able to make adjustments. We have our sky in the background. We have our grass. We're starting to form the uh, bones to our not building. So we're pretty much almost there with the bones. And then I'll show you, we just have these kind of these, these two little rectangle, re rectangles that are at the top. And everything can be adjusted. Like I said, if you need to go higher on a part, you can go higher. Long as you're thin with the paint, you'll be able to adjust. And once we paint the final color on top, you'll be able to uh, cover and mask whatever you don't need. But these are just the bones. This is the sketch. Um, like I said, everything is adjustments. I'll make adjustments as I go, fine tuning my painting. But you wanna have your bones. Problem. But you just want to work on your sky, work on your ground, the grass. We have the um, building that we're starting. Like I said, this is just a sketch. Even if your lines are rough, it's okay. We'll fine tune them as we go. But work on your uh, work on your sketch lines, and so I think let's see if we're gonna switch brushes. Yeah, yeah. Just get your uh, sketch lines out, then uh, you can clean your brush. But like I said, I'm gonna take my time, stay in the zone, working on those uh, uh, sketch lines of your bones of your knot building, and then once you're cool, um, clean your brush, and then I'll chill out. Um, for a little bit until we go to the next step. We're gonna probably go back to the uh, bigger brush, but once you have your uh, bones of your building, you can clean your big brush. Not your big brush, your pencil brush, and then we'll go to the big brush. Okay, so um, like I said, take your time. It's all sketches. 
Um, like I said, I have, even on mine, you can see it's kind of a rough sketch. And then I'll, I'll fine tune it once I paint it. But I have sky, I have grass, and I have my building. So I'll give you a, a few minutes um, until you, uh, you know, work, work it out. Like I said, it's all adjustments. Um, don't get caught, off, caught, caught up if something's a little off. With each step, you'll be able to fine tune. But clean your pencil brush, and then we're going to go to the biggest brush. But I'll give you a couple minutes, and then we'll come back together to work on the bottom part of our building. Work. Right. Are, we, are, are we good? Are you need more time for your bones? Work on your uh, sketches for your uh, building? Are we, are we cool? I think we're good. Sounds like people okay. are ready. Okay, cool. No, no problem. If I need to slow down, just let me know. Okay, so it's all really a little bit of mixing colors. Like uh, you don't really need too much paint because your, your canvas is smaller. Um, so what I want to do this part, I went with a tan or a sand, which is all I did is I took a, a little bit of brown. I take a little bit of brown and I stir it into some of my uh, white paint just to kind of create a tan. You want like a lighter, a light brown, like a tan, sand type color. And then I'm using my biggest brush and we also want to mask our, eventually mask our red lines that we don't need. But all I'm doing is that first square with that lighter brown, it's almost a tan or sand. And the same thing, you want to stretch out that paint. Stretch it out. But if it's a little lighter or it's a little darker, it's okay. But we just want to be able to probably use our pure uh, brown up top, that, that pure brown we want to use. And I'll probably put a little bit of red into my brown. The tan I got by mixing, I took a, I took a little bit of brown and I stirred it into my white paint. So just add a little bit of white to your brown just to lighten it up because we want to lighten it up. The bottom part is going to be the lighter brown. I just added a little bit of white paint to the brown. So remember, eventually you want to cover the red that we don't need. So I just kind of paint over that red I don't need on my square. Okay, so I know it's... So I painted over the red I don't need. Like I said, I still see some of that red. I'll, I'll clean it up later, but you just wanna kind of work on that first square with your light brown. We're trying to fill up the solids, light brown, brown with some red. Next will be brown with some red, but just going a little ahead. I'm not gonna go to the next step. Just do your, Tan, 
You're tan right now. Once you have your tan square right here, you can clean your brush. And also you can think about if it's something you wanna add or something you wanna change, you can. Cause I know I threw a little, a little moon on there um, as you see on the sample. Um, but if it's something you wanna add or something you wanna change, like down here, we, I know there's a couple uh, lights. We'll get to that later. You have, you have the bushes. I mean, it might be something that you notice or you know that I don't know. Um, you know, be, be willing to add. Um, I have the tan. I've cleaned my brush. Like I said, I'll, I'll let everybody uh, catch, up to the, uh, catch up to me. Make sure everybody's uh, ready to go to the next step. But you do want to clean your brush after you have the tan. But... What I'll do is, um, are we still, we still, I know some of us are probably still working on our bottom tier. It's okay. But you want to clean your brush after you finish. I'm going with my big brush, that same big brush that you have. You want to stick to that. This bottom part, this is going to be green. We'll do that later. We have tan. We'll go to this tier, which is going to be brown brown but with the brown I mix a little bit of red into the brown so tan brown with a little bit of red I'll just go a little ahead um if you need me to slow down I'll slow down but I just added a tiny 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 bit of a uh, red just to give it a different look. So the second one is brown with maybe a little bit of red. And remember, we wanna cover the red we don't need. So we can start to cover that now. Still, you want to smooth out the paint. So I smooth it out so it can dry. Okay, so I have the bottom is that tan. This one is brown with a little bit of red. This is gonna be green, but I smoothed it out. I cover the red I don't need. So if you're still working on your tan down here, it's okay. Top part is brown. Okay, so the tan, the brown, even if you go with pure brown, it's okay. But just if you mix a little bit, sometimes when you mix the color, it just kind of gives it more life. But work on your tan, work on your brown. Also the top, I kind of painted the top. but smooth out the paint and it'll dry Wait, so that is we that, can paint on top of it. Is the top brown and red too, or just brown? Yeah, I, I kind of went, like I said, you could either go with the brown or add a little bit of red to it. Okay. But those two are the same color. Those tears are the same color. But 
But once you do get the brown, you have the tan and then you have the brown, you can clean your brush. But these are just the base, the base colors, just laying down the base. And then we'll put the details on top of it. Okay, so once you have your brown, clean your brush. Um, we could still stick with the big brush. This area right here is gonna be green. And you could take the pure green or either that forest green So I just went green. I'm starting to cover, starting to cover the uh, red that I don't need, just so I won't have to worry about covering it at the end. But we're getting there. It's just the fine little details. So Nick, I have a question for you. I was just curious how you got started painting. Um, I mean, I always loved art um, as a kid from preschool, um, but didn't know I'd be able to make a living as an artist. I would always draw, um, yeah, draw. Then I fell in love with the airbrush and I begged my mom to get me an airbrush in the 10th grade and it was expensive and she got it for me. So I would just read books. Still didn't know I was gonna be an artist. Um, would start a painting for people for my friends in school, in high school, um, you know, painting projects for my mom's friends and stuff. Um, the first celebrity I started painting for was um, Snoop Dogg. Somebody had, uh, his one of his event planners had contacted me. And for his kids, I would paint whatever the theme of the party was. I would paint like SpongeBob or Spider-Man. So I started doing that. And then about 1996, when, um, when uh, internet was still dial up, I don't know, you, got, you, you guys probably weren't even born, but uh, the internet was dial up. Somebody told me about eBay and I figured out how to put a website up and then that took off. And then I started to paint for people around the world. Um, so before the, uh, uh, this epidemic, uh, corona epidemic, I was doing two, like 10 events a week and doing a lot of projects. Um, art for, my first TV stuff was WWE. I, I painted stuff that the wrestlers wore into the ring. And then I did an uh, episode of Ray Donovan. And I did Blackish since the start when it was a pilot. I did Blackish. Then last July, I did promo for the show Snowfall, and um, uh, they Keenan and Kel brought back all that, and I got to paint the uh, Good Burger cars. So I don't know, just love art, just love connecting with people, love um, just everything art related. I love. Well, that's a really cool story. Thanks for um, sharing, and we're really excited and happy to have you virtually here with Union College tonight. No, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm having I'm having fun. I know we we have a advanced painting, but it, it's going to come together. We're very excited to see the final product. Okay. So I have the green. I'm going to start to go to. Yeah, behind behind me are are paintings. Um, I know somebody asked the question. I'm working on a, a painting of a high school student behind me. There's some other projects scattered around here that I'm working on. 
Um, but behind me is, uh, uh, I did that like maybe like five or 10 minutes of, of Michael Jackson uh, painting that was, um, I used, I, well, before the, um, this uh, virus dilemma, I would paint on Friday nights um, at this hotel in Beverly Hills where they have these musicians playing and I would paint. So I would pa paint quick portraits. I did that one, but yeah, there's some of my uh, art. It's all scattered, scattered in here. What I want you to do is I want you to grab your pencil brush. Oh, thank you. I want you to grab your pencil brush again. And so what I want to do, you could either use white paint or you can use a tan, a lighter brown than this, but you just want to be able to see the contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do a real, real light tan by using white with a tad bit, a tad bit of um, white paint. So I'm mixing, I just want it to be lighter and I'll show you, you wanna be able to see contrast. So you see right there, you can kind of see contrast. It's, it's like a tan. It's lighter than what we have down here. And that's gonna kind of help us start to paint our little details. You could test it up there just how I did, that tan, just to where you see contrast. So if it's, if it's, a, little, if it's a little off, it's okay. Don't get caught up on it. I know it's a lot of little details. Um, if you have the uh, sample, you can kind of follow and I'll try to explain to you and go slowly. But I have this, I have that tier where I tested it and I could see that it's lighter, that I have that contrast. So down here, and I'll show you, I know you might probably can't see it. It's a line down the bottom. Where the grass meets the building and I hold it up so you can see it. You see right there, I have the line across, then I have the line down at the bottom. So the line at the top, the line at the bottom. And we have these little triangles right here that kind of go right here. So that line at the bottom, and then on this, it's like a little triangle in there, like a little triangle, or you can go that line and that kind of slants down. Okay, so. I have the line at the top, the line at the bottom. We have this line that goes across. Okay, so it's the line where the tan meets the brown. We have about this much space with this line. So it's one, two, three, and four. So the one at the bottom where the grass meets, meets the building, triangles on this side. the line up top. So you should have a total of four lines. This one has a little more space right there.
and also, like I said, if, if, if anything, you can always make an adjustment. If you need to make an adjustment and go back to your tan, you can. But you have the uh, four lines that are in your building. And I know it's not, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's a painting. It's not going to be exactly like the not building. I know it might have more uh, windows, more doors. Um, but I have this. This right here is space. It's going to stay uh, empty. So right here, I'm going to come down to the second one. So right here, the second one, I'm going to kind of add these ends or these uh, kind of upside down U's. I'm not really counting how many, I'm not really counting how many it is, but I just want it somewhat spaced, the same spacing, the same size. But it's kind of like a, an upside down N or upside down U or an N, but that's on the, not the first one, but come down to the second one. And I didn't really count how many I have. You just wanna kinda have them evenly spaced. We'll fill in those later, but just work on those, get yourself across the building with the upside down uh, N or upside down U that little arc, we're getting there. We have that arch on that tier. As long as you do that arch on that tier. I believe these are uh, windows above those arches. And I'll just put like three little lines right above. You see it kind of goes right above each each window right here, I'll do three lines. I'll go to this building, three lines. So it's just right above those uh, buildings. I'm just doing three lines. So it's just small little details that we're adding, but Above each arch is these three little lines. Like I said, don't get caught up on if they're not perfect lines and, and match up. These are just pretty much the base. We're gonna go over with darker colors and fine tune it. But we have our, um, we have our, uh, arc windows right here on this tier, the little line windows. It's three little lines. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. So above it, above it, we have those three lines, which are uh, windows, I believe. And even right here underneath it, we'll do three more. So it's just adding some details. Like I said, we'll change, change the different colors, but it's three lines above the window, three lines below the window. But, but, but on those arc windows, you wanna go three up top, right on top, and three on the bottom. So it's just little details we're adding. It's a lot of details on the building. Trying to break it down uh, slowly with the uh, ends or the upside down U's, which are on that second tier. Three lines on top, three lines on the bottom. And if it's a little off, it's okay. Like I said, don't beat yourself up if it's not, the lines aren't right or something's a little off. 
you know, just kind of letting ourselves go, zoning out, just bringing it all together. Nick, what's your favorite thing to have painted? The favorite thing I've painted? Um, I don't know. I like to paint everything. Just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of my dreams have been realized through art, like being able to travel and come to Union um, was like a dream of, of wanting to tour and take my art and paint for people in other states and other countries. So it's, it's just probably like a lot of moments that I've dreamt about that I've had, uh, meeting a lot of people, like loving Michael Jackson as a kid and being able to paint uh, and his mom see me paint him on TV. Um, our loving LL Cool J and being able to paint like uh, maybe about five of his personal events. So it's all just moments, you know, moments that I, I'm like thankful to paint, thankful to do what I love and, and, and just want to like, I don't know, just every moment. I, don't, I never know, you know, like where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do. I just like taking the ride of, of, of being an artist. But I love, sometimes the painting is hard for me. Sometimes it's easy. It all depends. But most of the time I'm happy with the, with the, with the paint, with the paintings or the jobs that I do. Unless I have a crazy deadline, sometimes that makes it hard and makes it work. But I, I have those tears. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to kind of put where the door is going to be. The door is kind of if you divide your uh, divide your uh, building in half. And let me make sure I'm doing it right. Okay, so I divide it in half. I try to go in the middle. And it's a it's a rectangle. So it's kind of a rectangle. We'll change the color. I think it's like some a little step line you can kind of put right here. Okay. But the door the door is a, a rectangle. And these are just the base colors. We're gonna fill it in. And I know you all, I sent you guys some super, super fine, fine, fine pencil brushes. So still with that tan color that you're using for the, for the bottom. Like I said, my brushes is, is, is super thick, but I think I'm gonna grab one of the brushes I sent you. It's had like one of those super fine points. And I'm gonna use that tan. But what I'm going to do is, and let me know if I need to slow down, I'll slow down. Um, but I want to use that tan up top. And it's, it's just some uh, little, little fine details with the tan. And I'll show you what it is. I'll bring it up close so you can see. Like I said, you just want to make sure you have that nice fine point. Okay. You see what I did? I took the pencil brush, that very fine, fine brush that you have. I kind of put a little bit of white, or not the white paint, this tan, this light tan right here and right here. A line underneath. And then I just painted these four little lines that kind of these go to the left and then these go to the right but with that thin brush if you put it in water you have that nice fine point a little 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 bit of paint a little bit of paint and then you'll be able to just kind of do this line over to the left and to the right 
If you see on the sample uh, instruction, you can kind of see it. Okay, so we should have, we're working on our windows. We got our door down there. We have the top. On top of our building, we have those arcs. But that's done with the tan. But how, how are we doing? Once you have this, you can clean your brush. So we're almost there. So I have that. What I want to do now is I want to add my moon. I'm, um, I'm going to add that moon like you see on the sample if you want to add it. The moon is just with a little bit of pure white paint. So I'll put my moon about right here. Okay, so I've, I've added my moon. That was done with uh, white paint, a circle, how big you want your circle or how big you want your moon. I took that same white, white paint, the side that my moon is, and I kind of skimmed it a little bit just to kind of show that light is hitting on that right side. So the moon, and then I just kind of, arced on the side a little bit with the white paint, just kind of showing that the light is hitting on that side. So whenever you're painting and are drawing, you just want to know your light side, your dark side. So this is going to be getting all my light on my right side. This is going to be my dark side. So I'll probably darken it a little bit on this side just to make that more dramatic on that side. But my moon, my buildings hit. But clean your brush after you have your moon, clean your brush after you have the side, you can clean your brush. Um, we're gonna stick still with the pencil brush. Okay, so let me let me know if you need a little more time, but I'm, I got my pencil brush clean. I cleaned them, uh, I, I did the moon, it's clean. I'm gonna go with pure red with my pencil brush and right where that green hits the brown, okay, I don't know if you could see it, but you see it's like a stripe of red that grows across the top of the green. So the next step, you, you don't have to clean your brush. What you can do is, like I said, I'm gonna probably stir into my, um, yeah, we're still sticking with the pencil brush, the pencil brush for the red line. Um, I'm gonna still stick the rest of the way, we'll probably use the pencil brush. So I'm gonna go and start to do some, uh, some detail work. I'll explain to you what I'm doing. So I'm probably going to use a tad, tad, little bit of, um, a little bit of black paint into some brown paint because I don't want the uh, black paint to be too harsh. So I'll start a little bit lighter. It looks like I uh, mixed um, right here. It looks black, but I took a dot of black to where it's like a dark brown, it's just a little bit lighter. I might go to some of my black paint, but what I wanna do right now, I don't wanna go all the way harsh with the black paint now. I wanna start to paint some of the details with the pencil brush. So like you wanna make sure you have that point, a good point. I'm gonna paint my door.
okay? So you see my door, I painted it. It, it looks black, but it's almost like a dark brown. And you want to make sure you have that nice fine point. So I did my door right here. I'll do these arcs right here. So it's inside. We're just filling them in the inside right there. So just fill in the inside of those windows. That's a, a, a dark brown, almost, uh, almost black with the black paint, but I just have kind of, I'm doing the windows. And we're going with these windows, the three on top and the three on the bottom. It's that dark brown, and you just want to do a line right on top. You see those lines right on top? Right on top of those lighter lines you have, you just want to add the three lines. And I have a little contrast. Some of it you see more black. Some of it you see brown. You see the the uh, dark the dark brown. You want you want that contrast in there. We got the three on the top, the three on the bottom. So the key is just to always have that point. Like sometimes it might get clumpy. If it gets clumpy, you can take your napkin. You take your napkin and kind of get that point again, or you can clean your brush just to make sure you have that fine point. So the windows, we have the arcs. We have each three line I've painted over with the dark brown or black. And then also, like if you're if you're waiting or and you're with me or are you you want to go back to something to fine tune it, you can. Like I'm looking at at you know something might be a little off. I can fix it a little bit. Fix my door. Uh, if my moon, I want it bolder. It looks a little like it can take another layer um, of uh, white paint. Um, whatever you want to add, you can add or wherever you wanna go back to, you can go back to. So I think I'm just gonna round my moon off some, do another layer where it's bolder. So like I said, we're almost there. We just have this, uh, I'm still sticking with my uh, dark brown. I'm gonna do like the windows right here, the one, two, three, kind of space it out. So this is with dark brown.
So it's just kind of the three windows up top. Just the little details that we're adding. But that's, it looks like black. I'm kind of using black or dark brown. I like to darken this side a little bit. Just to kind of make it darker where it's kind of the shadowing is not on that side. So it's all little details. I know it's a lot of details. I'm just kind of kind of bouncing around different places. I'll go back to that tan. So we kind of went back to that tan. I'm adding, added some more lines on there. Just little, little details that bring it to life. But I know we're all over the place. Some of us are at different places, which are okay. okay. You want to just like, so work on your windows. Uh, work on the windows up there. It's just um, black or dark brown. I put some tan lines right here. These kind of come off the top on that brown. You know, make sure you have that fine point. Sometimes I don't even clean the brush. Depending on what color, I'm like kind of bouncing back and forth. Okay, so like I said, I'm bouncing of, around different places. I've added on that green, um, except I know we're all over the place. On the, on the green, I've added that dark brown or black, the three lines, we always just stuck to the three lines to keep it uh, together and simple. The three lines on top, the arc right there with the dark brown or black. I have my door. If you see on the side of my door, those are the, uh, the uh, lights. I think it's two lights on each side of the, well, one light on each side of the door. On the outside, there's a light. So I have the light pole, and then I'll do the light, actual light, which will just be a circle on the top. But I'm pretty much getting there. I have the dark brown on the edges. I have the light on the outside. I mean, you can go further if you wanna add uh, some cloud, you know, maybe some more dramatic clouds or you wanna add a bird or whatever you can or bird or two, but it's pretty much getting there. Like I said, I have the black uh, light, light poles. You can go back to green kind of just creating, I think the bushes, I've seen, I seen the bushes. Yeah, I think you have like some, either some purple or red, some purple or red bushes up here, but you can just kind of dot to kind of add bushes. I'm going with uh, green and black, but I just kind of dot at it for bushes. So I'm just blotting at it. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way, but I just kind of put some texture down there, the bushes. Like I said, I think right in front of here, they're kind of like either some red or purple uh, bushes, like right there that you can add. But I just kind of added a little bit of bushes on the side. And then I'll, I'll, I'll clean my brush add those uh, red, those red or uh, purple uh, bushes right there.
And I'm, I'm just dotting at it. So starting to kind of build up the bushes with purple. Blue and red will make that purple if you want. The bushes, I have uh, green. You could use, uh, go back and forth between black and uh, green. Look, I think I'm, I'm pretty much there. I just wanna add the lights. But if you have any questions on anything or any suggestions, anything you might want to add, you can let me know. Um, but it's just fine tuning three, the arc three. We got three up here. And you can go in further with the detail. You can fine tune what you want. Like I said, I add uh, bushes down by just kind of dotting at it. I need to put my lights, my lights on my light poles. And that's just uh, circles on, on top. I'm just kind of fine tuning. So it's bouncing back and forth. Like I said, the, the light pole, you can put the lights on top, which is the circle. You have the bushes on top of that grass, kind of a straight line, but I just kind of blot at it. Pretty sure somebody's gonna add something cool or a change all the paintings will be different. But like I said, add whatever you wanna add to it. But I think I'm cool where I'm at. So just some final notes before you guys um, start taking off. I just want to thank you all for coming and enjoying our pandemic paint night. I know that um, being away from campus is really difficult and I hope that in painting the knot we're able to give you something from campus to bring to your house. Um, just a reminder that if you do post um, this, a picture of your painting on your story and tag um, at you program underscore union, you will be entered for a chance to win a paint kit sent to your house. So please remember to do that. Um, thank you so much for coming.
And we hope that you guys had a wonderful time and have a great rest of your night.